Hey folks, welcome back to War Thunder. So today I thought I'd give some live comms for going the warrior. Um, probably going to end up not making a video out of this because it'll probably just be incredibly frustrating, death after death after death after death, and uh, it, it, it's it's very unforgiving, very difficult to play. Right now, the um, the 30 mil gun is definitely incorrect, or at least its ammunition is. It's being given HVAP um, at ammo and slow modifiers rather than the APDS, which it says it has in the actual belt name. So currently the best shell that you actually do have, at least in my opinion, is the AP shell that comes as part of the default belt, which has 60 flat pan and 29 pan at 60 degrees. But it also shrapnels really nicely if you can actually get it inside the tank. So HVAP's fine for like flat side shots, but you're better off using the AP for anything else. The annoying thing is that the AP is only every one in three shots, I think. Or maybe every other shot for the default belt, so you can't just have a straight AP belt. I'd much rather it be straight a straight AP, straight HE, and straight um, APDS because I'm sure that in real life you wouldn't have mixed clips of ammo when there's only three. For some reason it's six in, in game, but in real life it's clips of three. Is he dead? Or am I going to get him? Wait. Okay, so we got one kill. Um, definitely need to just play super, super passive and, and um, spot for the team more than try and kill things for myself for um, playing this tank. ATGMs should definitely be considered the primary weapon. The 30mm should either be used as a, like a last ditch effort kind of weapon or when you know, I mean honestly right, even when you've got something dead to rise and it's perfect conditions for when the 30mm should be used. Like say you've got a Shilka, a 906, a BMP, something like that, made out of like tissue paper that's completely oblivious to your presence, sat sideways on or even like the rear facing you, where you know you've got well sufficient pan to do damage and it should be the easiest kill in the world, even under those situations. I think it's safer to just use the ATGM to hull break the, the target rather than try and pick away the crew or the ammo with a 30 mil because um, it's just that bad. It's it's really, really bad. Okay, we've got a T-64. See, the T-64 is from the rear. It is actually possible to kill with HVAP because the turret rear is uh, thin enough. Oh. 
damn it. Fuck it. So this is um Hopefully he doesn't have FPA. But let's be real, he's gonna have FPA. Oh actually maybe not. Maybe not. His horizontal drives just went out. So let's um wait. I was gonna try and finish him off at the 30, but never mind. So two two OT gems for two kills. I'm in um, a really terrible position right now. Because they are more than likely going to be pushing down through these things. And I really don't know where to go. TATB just died on C. What is that? Oh, it was a 906. I'd have probably tried to get some 30 mil shots on. Oh, there's something else out there. He is in ATGM range. Let's go for it. Should get an assist for that. Still got quite a lot of people left. And there's a ZSU over there. I can kill a ZSU. Well done. The enemy tank has been destroyed. Thank you. I'm really worried there's maybe some people here though. I guess they must Attention to the map. Where was that? Where 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 I was really worried that, that bush there was gonna just fucking eat the eat the missile. But he's, he was turning to face me, so I had to just, I had to wing it.
Hello. This is so bad. I, I need to kill this guy. What the fuck? So yeah, um, pretty frustrating, <laughs> as you can probably tell. But getting kills with this thing is so satisfying that it makes it worth it. Um, and honestly, I think that if they give the warrior the same performance ammunition that the BMP has, even despite the really really low rate of fire and the lack of stabilizer, I can really see this being like one of my most played vehicles. It's, it's just so, so it's fucking satisfying as shit. And only having an auto cannon, if you can even call this an auto cannon, it just makes you feel like such an underdog. So when you do really well, it, it like lifts you up that much more than it would normally. Um, and in this game that this clip's from, I actually managed to get seven kills, but I did die twice. And uh, Personally, I don't feel like it's just that much of an achievement if you get killed and, and sort of have to rely on, uh, you know, your backups. But seven kills in one game with the Warrior is the best that I've had so far. Um, in fairness to me, the first time I died is because um, I was trying to cross through their respawn. And somebody respawned right behind me, which was kind of bullshit. Um, I blame the new uh, spawn mechanics for that, because uh, if that had been before the patch... Hang on a minute. Just kill this guy. But um, if that had been before the patch, when people didn't get a million respawns because of the spawn point system, um, then I wouldn't have died because the guy wouldn't have had enough respawns to uh, to come back and kill me again. So that sucked. And then the second death was because um, a 906 came around the corner and because I can't trust the 30mm to actually do what it's supposed to do, um, I tried to launch an anti-gem, but I think that because I, I was shooting downwards on a hill towards him and it was super close range, so I think the missile went right over his head, and then he just one-shot me. So, um, it could have gone better. But, yeah, so all you're seeing now is just a collection of um, kills from other games that I had. And, uh, yeah, basically that's it. Um, in a minute, though, it's going to end with um, probably the most intense scenario that I've been in driving this thing. I was on um, Maginot at top tier and there must have been a point when there was like five, six, seven, maybe even more than that T64s just driving all around me and I was just sort of sat in the middle of them. Um, <laughs> you'll see it in a bit but um, I'll catch up with you at that point actually. Um, stick around and I'll, I'll do commentary over the, uh, the Maginot section.
Right, okay, so this is the most intense thing that I've had in the Warrior by a long way. And um, I did want to sort of fit this earlier on in the video because I feel like there's probably going to be like three of you that actually see it this far. So if you do watch it to this point, then let me know in the comments because uh, it's nice to know that all, all the viewer attention is more than 30 seconds. But um, anyway, yeah, so I just got shot from somewhere. Um, there's, there's T-64s, there's two of them over here. Um, I'm already getting frustrated by the fact that the spotting mechanic has a cooldown, which is just so annoying. God damn it, fun. But um, I want to be able to mark all the targets, because obviously I'm very vulnerable. Um, and I'm, I need the team to be aware of people, and I, I don't feel like I can trust the team to be able to see where people are unless there's a 3D fucking spot marker on them. So, <laughs> I'm just... I want to engage to try and reduce the number of guns that can shoot at me, but I also don't want to fire when it's not going to kill them because obviously then they're just going to be aware of me and I, then there's just going to be too many people bearing down on me and it, it gets so stressful when you can't just handle the targets yourself. So that's one down. I think there's still maybe two over there. Two or three teammates over there, but uh, with the positions that they're in, they're not all going to get shots on anything that I might be able to get line of sight on from my position. So I've got these buildings on my right as cover, and I've got like a sort of hill or a berm to my left, so I'm in quite a good spot. And I pushed really hard to get as far forward as possible because obviously I have to sort of deal with shit at strictly close range. Even the ATGM has a 2 kilometer maximum range, which really hurts it personally, like even the upgrade of Milan is still only 2 kilometers, and that makes it kind of useless for shooting down helicopters and stuff, because typically they'll sit 3 or more kilometers away. So that T-64 has been immobilized and he smoked up, even though there's no chance in hell I was going to peek out and try and shoot again, because he would have just annihilated me. Spot him again through the smoke, and I decide that when he can't see me, I'm just going to book it and get the fuck out of there, because the first thing I expect him to do when he's finished repairing is drive over there and try and kill me. So uh, marking targets is um, handy not only because it gives you SP and uh, you know all the other shit, but also because um, it allows you to move without needing to look at them and know where they go. That is the first TAM that I've seen since the patch dropped, and I haven't seen a single other one since. So, uh, clearly not particularly popular. So anyway, the guy that I did actually mark whilst he was in the smoke, the guy that I repositioned to avoid, um, I think the guy I just marked is the same guy, but I'm not actually sure, because the mark went off for a small amount of time. <coughs> So, right now I'm kind of thinking that there might still be a guy over to the right somewhere. But, mainly I'm just trying to push to a position to keep this guy spotted that's ahead of me. Because the spot's just gone off again. So there's, that's a KPZ or an M, well, it will be a KPZ because America's always on my team. And then, again, I don't think this is the same guy, I think that's a new one because the first one I saw was a, I'm pretty sure it was a B. The second one I'm pretty sure was an A. And then that's a B again. And there's no way that the first guy could have got that far. Or there's no reason for him to be in that position that he's currently in. Let alone have not the time to get there. Anyway, unfortunately don't kill him, but I do knock his gun out. This guy's dying, but I just want to get the points for the assist, so I mark him up again. Um, the guy that we just took the gun out on has smoked up. Probably because he's stationary and repairing, so I'm not going to worry about him right now. Just spotted another T-64. Oh, and then there's another one even closer. So right now, there's one behind me, and there's at least two in front. I was really hoping to shoot through the 20mm weak spot on the floor plate to try and kill the driver of that one just then, but 
There's another one there, look. They're just, they're fucking everywhere. Oh, I love it when you see all the, the little debris bits fly off and when they explode. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice when uh, when you manage to lead a short range ATGM like that, it's quite difficult to do. So there's this guy here, um, this is the closest call you will ever see in gaming history. I'm thinking to myself, oh that's it, I'm dead. <laughs> and then I get saved at the last fucking second. But there's a guy by that house just over there and I see him and I'm thinking shit. And then if he hadn't been using HE, I would have survived then. Because it would have just clipped straight through that armor panel and it wouldn't have actually hit any significant part of the tank. He basically just fucking skimmed me by the narrowest of margins. But even after all that action, I still only got two kills and four assists. You feel like you're doing so much more than you actually are. Whenever you're in an IFV, it's, um, it's actually kind of annoying. But um, anyway, I have been using the Conqueror as a backup for the Warrior because um, Britain doesn't really have an 8.0 lineup. So I've been purposely like down tearing it, if you like. Um, and a viewer requested some Conqueror action, so I've just whacked a kill or two in at the end here. But um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Sub for more and all that, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.